Okay, so I absolutely owe comics an apology because for the last, uh, I don't know how long, I've been complaining that the over-the-top hype, the silliness, the, this event will change comics forever and nothing will ever be the same again stuff is just hyperbolic and ludicrous and nobody really likes it. Um, and it doesn't mean anything. But I owe an apology to comics because, I, you know, you can't blame comics when everything is taking this hype approach. Why is that? Are people just stupid? Hey, everybody, this is Perch. Um, okay, so here's where if you are one of the listeners and you do not live in the United States, I'd love to get some of your comments on this because uh, I've talked to, you know, I've got some people I talk to regularly, of course, out of Japan. Uh, I talk to some people down in South America, out of Peru and Brazil. I talk to people in uh, Austria and Germany and Switzerland and Norway and, and, and various places all over India. Um, and I, I, I talk to people, and this is a consistent thing they say, that Americans, in particular, um, it is breathless, over-the-top hype for everything. And they are always confused, like, who, why, why is anybody falling for this? Now, I haven't spent enough time in these countries to know if this is also happening there and they're just ignoring it. But I can say, having spent enough time in Japan, Japan does not operate this way. Japan does not operate with the... This is what you must watch, must read, must consume. You must, it will, you'll never get another chance like this. Uh, but it, it is, it, it's not happening there. I know that for a fact. And at least uh, with some of the friends I have down in, uh, in Italy, I know it's not really happening there either. That's just not how hype works there. But it is very much an American thing. It is, this is, this is the moment, the time that you have been waiting for. Kids, the Green Goblin is in this one. Whatever it happens to be, it is, it is that kind of super over-the-top hype. But it is, again, it's everywhere. Um, I, if we have an election coming up, as it turns out, and I would love to do a full show about kind of my thorough irritation with all things election, but that would be me venting, and nobody would like it, and it's not comics, and, you know, we, a lot of people come here to get away from politics. I, I, I shouldn't. I shouldn't. But I'm tempted so, so much. Every day I'm tempted. Every now and then I start a video and I'm just like four minutes into just kind of this insane rant. And I'm like, nope, nope, not for my channel. Delete. Delete, Matt Hardy. Uh, anyway, but that, but, you know, it is what it is. So I'm looking and, and um, the election is coming up. This is, I promise, not a video about the election. Uh, but the, the tweets and the, the messages from the campaigns are, it's only 13 days. It's only tw like oh, Barack Obama tweet. It's only 13 days until the most important election of our lifetime. Don't forget, you must vote. If you don't vote, this is this is the lifetime election for your lifetime, lifetime, lifetime. And you, I, I'm I'm looking at this and I'm like, I, I'm pretty sure in 2016 it was the most important election for our lifetime, and I'm pretty sure in 2024 when it's I mean, who knows? It's it's Joe B it's Kamala it's Kamala Harris against uh, Eric Trump. I, I don't know what, what's going to be. <laughs> it's it's like um, you know, it's always going to be the most important election of our lifetime, and the Super Bowl is always going to be this year. The pinnacle of football has reached this epic zenith level, where now two teams will combat like never before. You, this is the Super Bowl to remember. Featuring a halftime show by Maroon 5. You will love it. It will be like nothing you have ever seen before. And my question is, it's got to that's got to be working on someone because they keep doing it. And is that why maybe uh, in all things movies, politics, sports, comic books, there's a desire to get you kind of to forget what happened? I mean, ideally, like one year ago. I have a feeling that if, if somehow a lot of these entertainment companies, but if Marvel could push a button, and just clear everyone's memories of what they did one year ago, like they would hit that button and never stop hitting it. Because then, I mean, imagine you could do, you just think about the reboots and the recycles. Like it's, it's always number one time. It's always an important, bold new era. Like how can it be a bold new era? Like you've never seen before. If that new era is hitting like every year. I mean, it's, it's not a bold new era. It's, it's a, it's the same old tired era. I mean, how, how, so I, I guess 
comic books is definitely taking their cue from movies, from politics, from sports, for everything. That is really all about, you know, you have never, ever, ever, ever seen this before. And I just, I, I get, I, I, I feel like they're marketing to an empty room at that point. Nobody really believes this. I, I, I mean, you know, I, I may, or maybe it's possible that I'm just old and cynical, and that that is prop that could also be true. Both things could be true. Uh, but I, I just, to me, when I hear that kind of marketing in comic books, in politics, in movies, and whatever it happens to be. What it says to me, the message I get is, we've run out of ideas. Um, we don't really have a compelling argument here. Uh, we know both these guys suck. Uh, we know that this TV show is is crap. We know nobody was asking for another spinoff of uh, you know the Big Bang Theory. But screw it. Um, you know it's a bold new era. You've never seen this before. It is it is a TV event in the making. What is that TV event? It's a live action version of, uh, you know, the, the princess and the frog. It's an event. You've never seen this before for the very first time. You've, you've got to see this. You won't believe what they're letting us get away with. I, I, it, it, it feels very tired. And it, you know, it's, it's funny because I like you read the press releases, you read the marketing and it's, uh, you know, I get the press release comes out for a brand new Valkyrie one shot for King and black. And in the press release, they're talking to the uh, the writer or the artist, I don't recall who, and they like, when I got the call from Marvel Editorial telling me that we are going to create a brand new Valkyrie, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe my ears. I fell off my chair. I was like, oh my God, this is the, the, the thing I've been waiting for for my entire life. This is my dream come true. I'm so happy. God damn it. I'm so happy. Nobody really has those emotions, do they? For, like for this and and my my feeling is that if you if if these companies and comics are just toned it down like just just a little um i think they would sell more i think they would do more but i think there's this knee-jerk reaction to want to do the opposite of big hype like when the hype gets so over the top it's like god did, did you future state is coming out did you realize it's coming out there? There are comics there that every page is a orgasm of, of huge, amazing events. You are going to just, you, you will just soil your pants in how excited you are at this issue of Justice League, Future State. I, I, you've never seen anything like this. The, the creative team, they paid us. To work on this. We call like we at DC Editorial, we called some of the top creators, the entire industry, you've never heard of them, but they're they're top people. And when we told them our plans for future state justice league over two months, they they said we can't accept any money. We can't. It's too big. It's too huge. We're gonna pay you. We are gonna pay you for the honor of working on this earth shattering. I mean, there will not be comics after this. This comic will come out. It will blow everybody's minds just right off. And then we will drop the mic and we will saunter off into the sunset, have a white Russian. And that's it. That, that's the end of comics as we know it. We've hit the pinnacle. The, the pinnacle with this issue. I, I, think, I think people read it and are like, well, that's a bunch of crap. And, and they, just, they just tune out. But I mean, it's my experience that a lot of people who work in comics, the creators I talk to, tend to be somewhat cynical. They're they're kind of a cynical bunch. I, I would say, not gallows humor, but but just a little bit more darker humor. Um, as a general rule, not everybody, but a lot of them uh, have that kind of more cynical behavior, cynical attitude. And when I see them attached and connected to this kind of hype, look, kids, it's the Green Goblin! Damn it, he's back! I, then I think that it's, I, I just, I, I can't, I like, everybody's just having a laugh over this, right? I mean, like the, the creators, is it, are, they, are people, like Marvel's writing these quotes for these creators, right? Like there's no way that some of these people, some of these comic writers and artists are, are saying stuff like this. There just can't be. I, I, are they? Hey, you fan, you the reader, 
the customer, the person who's excited about this project. What is, uh, let's help out the comic publishers for a moment. Let's help them out. What is it that you um, would, what, what do you, what, what do you respond to? If somebody, if you are like, if you're going to take notice of a comic, a story, a new something, if you're going to, if it's like, if this is going to reach you as a consumer, you're going to be excited about this. What is it that does it for you? Is it an announcement of the creative team, a new character, a new, uh, is it, is it when they put all new and all different, you're like, well, I wasn't going to buy this, but it's got all new and all different on the cover. It's got both things. I can't not buy it now. It's got both. Is that what does it for you? What does it for you? What, what excites you? Because to me, it feels like a lot of the publishers are just completely like lost in the wilderness at this point, and they, they have no idea what to put on these comics, what to, how to hype them up. They're just like, i got 50 of them to do this month, so let's say this one's, uh, you know, break the internet. That That's something. Wait, that I think that's popular, break the internet. Like that, that woman with the big ass, she broke the internet. And that was a good thing. She got a lot of clicks and, uh, and then her husband ran for president and that's, that's pretty good. So we'll break the internet. Let's try that. But what would work for you? Let, let's help out. Cause I'm tired of this hype. Are you like, I, 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 it's like watching a cringy train wreck of a car accident with a train filled with babies. It's like, nobody wants to see that. So let's help them out with some good things. So in the comments below, what would work for you? What gets you excited? What gets you hyped? for a comic. And maybe I'm, again, maybe I'm wrong. And everything I said in this video is exactly what gets your heart pumping. You're ready to go. You can't wait to get to that comic store and spend that $5. You're, you can't, you can't wait. Let me know in the comments below. Hey, like, subscribe, click the bell for notifications. Um, make sure you turn into tomorrow's episode, uh, because it is going to be the biggest, biggest episode that you have ever like that you will not believe your ears it's gonna be huge absolutely huge don't miss it thanks for listening